before I came to the UK, I had suffered a lot of torture, a lot of abuse, but not from my people, but from the, for the, for, from the soldiers. First of all, my husband was killed and beheaded. I buried him without a head. Then my twin sister, Jane, and me, uh, and my father were shot dead at the, in our father's house. My three children were abducted. And up to now, I don't know where they are. They were taken, I think, in the bush. Because even the Red Cross tried to look, uh, is trying to look for them, but they can't go to the north of uh, that country. I was beaten, raped. Um, I had to bury my friends because that is what we did. We was, you have to bury your friend and you, you have to dig the grave by the sticks. So I was taken to my husband's friend's house and then they organized and they brought me to the UK to their friend whom they were doing business with. And after one week, because I was so sick, I was so, my body was full of wounds. Even I can show you my finger, which I cut, because I wanted to feel the pain. When I cut this finger, I didn't feel any pain, because pain was part of me. My experience was uh, very horrific. The interview was very uh, interrogating and uncomfortable feeling. They ask you many very specific and uh, tricky uh, questions. If you have enough evidence with you that prove yeah, that you've, you're, you've been prosecuted or been uh, danger and your life will be in danger, then you will guarantee your freedom. If you don't have these evidence with you, then you will be in trouble, then you will have to be, uh, um, to be in more interviews and then you will be uh, refused at the end. Even if you fled from war, or from uh, um, gender persecution, they expect you to give them these evidence on the day of the interview. From my experience with this interview, I've been assigned to have an interpreter. I didn't feel comfortable with him because he was a man and I was a woman and I, was, uh, f uh, and I traveled alone all the way from my country. And I felt from his voice and from his looks that he is uh, judging me. I asked the Home Office to change the interpreter and to, um, to, to speak by myself, and they refused that, and they said they have to go on with the interview. I, I just agreed on that, and at the end, they refused my case. After I recovered a little bit, they took me to the Home Office in Craydon, Lona House, then I claimed asylum. I was sent to Hawkington Detention Center. After two days, I was sent out, but they have booked for me to see the Medical Foundation. Now they call Freedom from Torture. I had a, a solicitor, and then I was also referred to the Refugee Council. My the process was very good, and um, I didn't face any problems since I arrived here. In my case, it was known uh, case and when I was kidnapped I was in a um, conference that's supported by a UK embassy. Although they have almost the same problems back in their countries and maybe they were tortured, raped or uh, they, ca they can't go back to their country and still the UK border agency didn't give them the, uh, the asylum or maybe they are not really aware of what's going on in, my, in their country. These women that's being destituted, they, all, they almost have the same stories. However, uh, nobody knows about their stories back in their country. So uh, I believe that they, they need to get help as I got help and they need to, to be listened to and they, need to, um, uh, uh, and they need some people to support them. I am 
from Eritrea. I am asylum seeker. I got refused from home office three times. I am a mother of two children. They are in Eritrea. I am here alone without my family. I don't have government support. I don't have home. I am homeless. I sleep in church. Sometimes I stay with friends and sometimes I stay in the bus at night. Winter is very difficult to be outside. <laughs> I go to charity to, to eat. Sometimes I don't have money, money for buses, so I can't go to eat. I can't go back to my country. I am one of the people who got a better treatment. Others are up to now destitute. They don't have anything. And a woman who is destitute, she can think of all sorts to, to look after herself. She can become a prostitute. Somebody can tell you, come and live with me. And living with that person, you are going to be a slave. A slave in the UK. Waiting without knowing what was decided and uh, without being told if any decision is made and they're just in limbo. Sometimes they're kept for over 10 years. Uh, reporting to the Home Office, maybe every once a week or every once a month. And it's very demoralizing for them to be kept waiting so long. They get frustrated, they get de-skilled, they lose their self-confidence. They are even afraid to talk, you know, even uh, when they are given a platform such as now because they just don't know what implication that might have on their status to be seen to be agitating for what they believe is their right. When you don't work for 10 years, you have no money. And sometimes you have no recourse to public funds. And you can't go back to the country where you came from. Maybe you left your home because of the injustices that were being done to you. And you can't just wake up you know, 15 years later and go back. Uh, you find that, that so many things have changed and they would not necessarily accept you. When they refused me, I didn't get any, any support from anywhere. And I went, I had to look myself. It's not a, easy to get vouchers. Uh, any money from charities. I had to tell uh, about my case, how I did my interview in home office, and they believe me and they get me a voucher, 10 pounds, 20 pounds a month. 20 pounds or 30 pounds voucher. How you think this one is enough? I had to go to that court to take a food bank. They give me just a, it's not nothing for that. They gave me maybe 100 kilogram of rice mm -hmm. and one onion, uh, one pot of tomatoes, two potatoes. Mm -hmm. It's nothing that one to live and to give up for poor children. The housing was the big problem. Where I used to live is very old house. Uh, my children is without electricity and without heater. I feel like yesterday I was homeless and I came with the forum, Women Forum uh, London, to campaign about destitution and uh, decision making asylum, in asylum process. 
I'm happy and uh, with the forum because we're connecting, we're working together. It's helping women is most important things for me because um, people have skill, their skill have lost through the system, they, they cannot work. So many women have um, skill but they don't have the language and they don't know the place where to go and to uh, integrate. My vision is to establish social enterprise so that disadvantaged people can work and use their skill to, to connect and to integrate with the British society. To be destitute is that you are alive, however you are dead, you cannot do anything, you cannot work, you cannot live, you cannot even go to a doctor if you are sick. I want the government to, to give training and more awareness to make it safer and more human. Refused asylum seekers who are destitute could be given a chance to accommodation and voucher maybe or some little money to look after themselves until they are, they are uh, repatriated to their home country. The people are ready to work and contribute to the UK economy as well as you know, improving their financial status. So the government is a loser. The people who are not allowed to work after so long are also losing. Refused women asylum seekers with no right to work is abuse of women's rights. We urge the government of UK to revisit its policy. Uh, good afternoon, we are the Refugee Women's Forum and uh, we are meeting here this afternoon uh, preparing to go and uh, talk about our issues with the parliamentarians and uh, our issues are related to uh, destitution and we hope that by the end of the discussion we will have moved a little closer towards solving this long-standing problem. First from home, from prosecution of uh, rape, you can't be, you know, fully uh, mentally uh, healthy to talk about it. So definitely, um, you will get refused, and this is the majority of the cases. And after you get refused, you get refused, and then you get destitute. And so this is the main issue. They are coming with a good reason of uh, uh, persecution, uh, having mm -hmm. first problems and torture and what. So if you deport this person back home where she came from, you are making it more worse for these people. And with the history, some people ended up uh, committing suicide, though they don't have the statistics here. So they feel they come here for help, protection, and they end up again being, that's the decision. If you are running away from persecution, you cannot carry all the evidence with you. They don't have that that hard proof on them, but they have proof because like others come here, their mothers, they left small children back home, and always a mother would want to be close to their family or children. But if the person had choice to go, they would go back. When they make a decision, sometimes it's based on no evidence and somebody just ju make their own judgment. Please, can you? ask those big people to maybe to support these women mm -hmm. and give them really support and uh, an accommodation until when they are re removed from the country yeah. because <laughs> it is really really a, an epidemic and uh, you know we have not got it right in the uk i don't yeah. think anybody says they've got it right but what I'm seeing right now is things getting worse, not better. And that's what worries me, because our chances of getting to the point where we can get it right go further and further away. Once we can show that we are still paying for these people to yeah. be here, because yeah. we're paying through our local councils, but we're not giving them the support that no. means that the system is working, then we can look at what we should be doing. Okay. Um, so until I know how big a problem is, it's hard to say to people, this is something you have to address. Well, after you... You grant the, the asylum and then you, you're uh, a refugee, you have a uh, five years status. You have 28 days to get out of the, out of the system and to be uh, fully supportive of yourself. Yeah. 
and that's what leads people to destitution as well. I cover violence against women and I am very concerned that those women are very vulnerable as a result of this gap. Yeah. How many there are, what happens to them next is a thing and your ideas and your sense about where people are going is a thing I'm so interested in. So you need the information. Yeah, we need us. the data to prove just how big a problem it is. Okay. Because I can have my individual examples from Walthamstow, which yes. is just one tiny corner of London, okay. but I know it's not just happening in Walthamstow. <laughs> we had only about half an hour, but we managed to cover a lot of the issues that uh, first uh, brought us to the meeting. We discussed uh, how much it's important to update the rules and the laws for uh, the refugee and asylum seekers and how much the awareness and and um, awareness and listening to asylum seeker and, and refugees is important. But she gave us a, a hearing and promised that she will, do, she will do what she can to help us in our campaign. We have hope uh, to end uh, um, this destitution. I think they will deliver our message to the big people so that they can act. And we are very optimistic now. We're going to search more, more destitute people to bring her because she, she wants to work together with us. We managed to raise the voices of the destitute woman and the refugee and the asylum seeker in UK by passing all the information and the case studies and the um, uh, the case studies that we worked on to the MP and she was very interested in to look into uh, to our um, um, research and she asked us for more information so this is a, a great success for us yes. and, uh, and she advised us on areas which we need to uh, based on mostly our evidence and we are going to work on that and we are very hopeful because she was very pleased with our research and she said we are doing very, very well. Thank you, group. Thank you very much. London Refugees Women. Yes. <laughs> we, the London Refugee Women's Forum, we will continue to campaign until our goals are met. And institution now. شباز غیب آمد و دستم گرفت و رفت شباز غیب آمد و دستم گرفت و رفت زان پس از صبر و شکر و تمنا گریستم تمنا گریستم